Listen, <laughs> I had a small glimpse into your daily life because you teach at North Green High School, right? So yes, sir. So you teach high school kids on the daily. Well, that's that's what I was tasked with was mm. that age group for, yeah. for Bible school. Man, that's a... I'd much rather have them. Them little ones scare me to death. The little ones are crazy in a different way. I think uh, the the interesting thing with high schoolers, and this is one of the points that we wanted to talk with you about, is what what is the difference nowadays? Because yes. you said you started teaching, what, back in 01? Yeah. That's when you took your position? Yep. What's the difference nowadays in um, just communicating with the younger generation, whether it be teaching, coaching, spreading the gospel? Like, what, what does the you approach that- look like now even? The kids... This Once is, you get through school. all the riz and for real, for reals, yeah. like what? How do you and, get through all that? Oh Lord, I don't even know what half that stuff means. Nope. But it's like they're speaking another language. Yeah. But this is going to sound bad, and it may be different in other places. Mm-hmm. I can just go by what I experienced. But when I first started teaching, it seemed like there was a lot more of those kids that had. Uh, both parents mm-hmm. living at home yeah. and were being raised in church. Right. And I felt more confidence early on. I mean, I, it never crossed my mind. I mean, I know these people. Some of them play ball for me mm-hmm. or they you'd see them at the games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they'd invite me out to their church. I'd right. be speaking or singing yeah. at churches. I'd see people that, oh, I, I know them from mm-hmm. school. And it just seemed like, that there was a lot more of that. I had mm-hmm. confidence. You can say anything. You don't have to worry right. about somebody getting offended or upset about it. And fast forward to today, there's a lot of kids that maybe they're living with grandparents mm-hmm. right? or they're in foster care or maybe it's a, a single parent. Yeah. You got a few wild, I mean wild situations oh, where yeah. uh, the person they're living with is not even blood kin. Yeah. It's their mother's ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Right. Who took them in because mom was in such bad yeah. shape. I mean, if you yeah. could think of the wildest scenarios, There's a few that's of what you're there. seeing now. Now, does that make you tread a little easier? It, it don't me. Mm-hmm. And I, I can remember, I got this story that I tell. Most time when people ask me to come and, and share, they'll say, "You care to give us a ten-minute devotional?" That's difficult for me. Some, <laughs> you know, some people, it's like yeah, you always go long in Sunday school. Oh my goodness, I uh, wind bag. <laughs> it, it just keeps blowing. Some yeah. people are like, "Gosh, how am I going to fill ten minutes up?" And James is like, I "Yeah, need I'm like, like thirty. Sure I can't have twenty. <laughs> Can I have fifty on the short end?" This, this is the one. <laughs> this is my go-to when I've got ten minutes or less. Um, I'm sitting in a class. In college, Mm -hmm. they're preparing me to be an educator in the public school system. So the and I'm at a Christian school Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, in college. I'm at this Christian school, and the topic comes up. Professors, you know, going through what you can say, what you can't Mm -hmm. say, and and, uh, here's how I made it through college. All right, I ain't very smart. So uh, and this is terrible. I tell my kids all the time, don't be like me. I wasn't a very good student. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, if, if if I came back to the dorm and you got a huge test the next mm-hmm. day to study for, yeah, but that PlayStation's calling my name. Heck yeah, yeah I need to get over here and, and play pizza some rolls. Money. Pizza back rolls then, it was, in the oven. it was NBA Live. There yeah. you go. Uh, and, you know, we had entire seasons going. They oh, call, yeah. call me the commissioner. I'm calling up dorm rooms. Hey, it's your game. Yeah, yeah. If you're not here in 10 minutes, I'm simulating. You're hosting yeah. tournaments. Yeah, we're moving on. <laughs> right. So uh wasn't the best student, so I can remember when I pulled up in the parking lot to take my teacher exam, when yeah. it's all said and done, you got to pass this or you don't get a license. Right. I pulled up in the parking lot. I, Lord, if you want me to teach school, <laughs> you're going to have to help me pass this test because I'm pretty sure I'll Bestow me with the knowledge yeah, right now. We're going to have to have a good guessing day <laughs> here because uh, I'm pretty Carrie sure Underwood I'm missing said, stuff. Jesus, take the wheel. Yeah. And, you know. James said, Jesus, take the pencil. <laughs> yeah. First <laughs> try. Two. We, we passed on the first there try. The Lord passed the test. He, I moved the pencil. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, when we get in it, I can remember thinking back on the, those classes. Mm-hmm. And that professor leading that day, telling you what you can do and what you can't do mm-hmm. and what you can say and what you shouldn't say. And if you want to keep your job. 
And I can just remember everybody taking part that day in class. They were raising their hand, giving them their opinions, uh, sharing examples. Right. And, you know, when I got, you know, high school, you kind of skate through, at least back in oh, my yeah. day. Oh, yeah. Could. I, oh, in yeah. college, you have – so I, my the card that I played was I want my professors to feel sorry for me. Mm. I want them to see that he's an idiot, but he's trying. You're going the pity route. So in high school, I'm sitting in the back of the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In college, I'm on the front row. Why, yeah. Oh, good strategy. Putting the effort in. And I'm not missing any classes. Good strategy. And when they would ask questions, I'd get a puzzled look on my face and start flipping pages, and they're like, we got to help this guy. Yeah. We got to help this guy. But he's trying. Bless bless his heart. Yeah. You know, so we'll give him a C. We'll get D, D. whatever it takes. (laughs) D flies. So (laughs) I, I, I made it through. My whole college career that way. Okay. Never speak up in class. Okay. You know, my dad had this famous saying, you can either keep your mouth shut and people will think you're an idiot. Or open it mm. and prove them right. That's it. Yep. Or open it and here they all figure they it out. They don't have to wonder. They right. don't have to wonder. That's true. So I never <laughs> said that. And that day in class, and it's one of those like exit classes where you're getting ready to graduate and here's this last bit of helpful information before you start your just need the credit education yeah. career. So I'm just sitting there and the Holy Spirit starts moving on me. Mm. Basically like, are you just going to sit here? and You ain't going to say nothing. And, and what they were all saying was, well, if a kid approaches you, then in your own time, maybe outside of class, you can share your opinions. Ah, uh, okay. But don't ever do that. Yeah, don't invoke in it. In front of a class of kids, yeah. uh, you wouldn't want some person from another religion pushing or peddling their faith on your children, so it's not fair for you to push that on their children. Mm. Now, if they ask you personally, then, I mean, that was that was going through that whole class period right. that yeah. day. It's all anybody was saying. You can't do this. You can't right. do that. And the longer I sat there, it just started mm. swelling up in you. Those yeah. of you that's born again. <laughs> You know the feeling that you get when you know you have to do something. Maybe you don't want to do it. Start sweating a little bit. But uh, you start white-knuckling pews. Uh, So anyway, I finally raised my hand, and there's like this collective gasp in the room. They're like, (laughs) the idiot's going to speak. The idiot's talking. (laughs) So uh, the the, the professor called on me, and I said, you know, I hear everything y'all are saying. And uh, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Mm Mm-hmm. But I took him straight back to that verse I shared earlier, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mm-hmm. There you go. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not in thy own understanding. In all thy ways, yeah. yep. acknowledge him. So I can't take a break from that yeah. when I go to work. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I have to treat my work yep. like my mission field. Yeah. yeah. Now, some people get called to the Congo. Yeah. yeah. Some people get called to China or yeah. wherever. Uh, I feel... That I've been called to Belton, to Belton Public Education. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we we have some things that we do there in wellness class. There's a lot of correlation you can make when you're talking about the ah, human body, yeah, decision making, yep. And there's all kinds of opportunities where you can reference mm-hmm. teachings, mm. concepts. Sometimes I even share the name of the person. That, hey, now Jesus said, yeah, you know, so, and, and I've never been afraid of that. It, I can't imagine l- losing a job for any better reason. Right. Oh, yeah. And I'm also crazy enough to think that if that door closes. Another one will open. Why, well, yeah, yeah, Lord, give me something else. Yeah. Well, so, and at the end of the day, too, I mean, and there's actually a quite lengthy list of folks who are unbelievers that will acknowledge that. Just on a, a just a practical level, everything Jesus said was pretty good stuff. Yeah, I mean, good advice, good practical application, things like that. I know one really popular uh, person who's not a believer by any means, but like Adam Savage from the MythBusters, he he has proclaimed in a couple of different occasions that he he likes the teachings of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Now he doesn't claim to be a believer. He's like. He said good stuff. This These stuff are all makes good sense. things. It makes sense. If we all treated everybody like yeah. we wanted to be treated, yep. you know, that whole golden rule thing yeah. that came from Christ, our yeah. Lord, then this world would be a better <laughs> Wait, place. Wait, that's where it come from? But there is a line that you draw. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had some teachings, and it, you either take them all or you don't take them right. at all, in my opinion. But there's one hard line he takes, 
where you're either saying, all right, this Jesus guy, he's either a liar. Right. Yeah. He's a lunatic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or he's Lord. Right. I just heard that from David Jeremiah. I think it was like last week, but he was he was preaching his series on the the I am statements mm -hmm. in the Gospel of John. Yeah. And when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, mm -hmm. and no man comes to the Father but I by me. me. Yeah, yeah. Then you've got all these people saying, well, if they're sincere in their belief, Ooh. it really don't matter what they believe. All these different paths can lead to God. Yeah. Well, then, if that's your take, then Jesus lied. Right. <laughs> uh, and if he is claiming to be the Son of God, and you think maybe there is no God, or or maybe uh, that there is a God, but it's just not the one he's talking about, okay, then you might consider him a lunatic. Yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. But because of that statement, he's he's one of those three. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going with the third. I'm going say. with Lord. So if he is Lord, if it's that big a deal... How can you not share it in your everyday yeah. life? If you work with people and they have no idea you attend church, yeah. if they have no idea you're a Christian, you miss the boat a little bit. Tell me what are you doing? Listen, that's are you just in this to make money and cash a check and go to the beach miss and the boat a little. yeah, I've, <laughs> go I've, on mission trips. One, of, one, of, <laughs> I think one of the the most sad things we could hear on this earth is, oh, well, I didn't know you were a Christian. That's sad, ain't it? Yeah, and that happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like, ooh, I'm not. I'm Something else sad I'm not living it, is though. when they know you're a Christian and they might say, I thought you were a Christian. They heard you say something or something. <laughs> and you're like, ouch. Yeah, that kind of hurt. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, there was the one who was perfect. Ego. Yeah. Uh, I'm not him. Yeah, me neither. Um, I'm way down at least. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, was, it was funny in Bible school, we were talking about uh, Ten Commandments and I said something about lying and he said, yeah, I've never... I've, I've not, I've never lied, and I said, "Well, I think you might have just yeah. did." Whoops! Uh, you, anyway. broke, you broke your streak right there. <laughs> uh, so John, one of the things that he says that I love is, is he says the uh, his brother John, yes, or the gospel writer John. I'm sorry, <laughs> clarify, John, John Buchanan. John oh Buchanan, no, your brother. Okay, he our, says, our "Look," and he probably didn't coin this phrase, but he says, "The message never changes; the method, method. has to," and so. What have you seen? I mean, you've been in public education and, and coaching for 25 years mm -hmm. now, or however long it was, 20 plus. Um, what are you seeing as being effective at reaching the kids today? Technology. Okay. If you can somehow Ooh. put it on a phone or show them an app, ah, uh, they, they, they're really into that stuff. Music has always been a yeah. hit sure. with kids, and that has changed a lot through the years. I came up during that era, and you're going to have a lot of listeners write me off right here, uh, but I don't care. I'll defend this stance to anybody. I don't care if it's some old woman <laughs> that, that only <laughs> sees things one way. But if uh, if you've got a person that is talented and can play like Garrett over here, yeah. I'd give anything if I could play the guitar like Garrett. Oh, it, it don't take much. I fake it a lot. Well... <laughs> If if I can plug something into a little electricity, yeah. and turn the volume up a little bit, and can glorify Jesus that way, yeah, using my talent, yeah. the person that's telling me that ain't right or that's not the way you need to do that, look, uh, it's time to get over yourself, <laughs> and uh, that that's one change I've noticed. I kind of grew up in that old school where. It was either hymns yeah. or mm -hmm. Southern gospel. Yeah. Oh, and, and even if the Southern gospel song had drums in it, mm. you you had to somehow muffle them. Mm. Oh, was that out? The drums yeah. were out? Set the church on and, fire. And now I've gone from that opinion, and I don't know that I even ever had that opinion, but it was like when DC Talk. <laughs> Jesus Freak. And some of those songs were coming <laughs> out. We were told, that's just Satan. Yeah. Making well, his way into gospel music. Making his way into gospel. <laughs> what if it's Jesus making his way into rock and roll? Yeah. What if somebody hears the gospel in a way that they enjoy hearing yeah. it? Yeah. And it, it brings about a response. Well, I'm like Paul. I'm not like Paul, but I, I agree with what <laughs> Paul says. I will be to all men mm -hmm. all things. Yeah. So by as all means... Might be able to reach one. Yeah. Mm. 
So he's all things to all people. Yeah. So he can reach people. Right. So, you know, and now we've had that discussion though. I think music, uh, I think music is such a big thing for young people. And, and yeah. I've, I think we've talked about it here on the podcast. There may be a young person that comes into a church for the first time ever. Yeah. And there are probably occasions where if the first thing they hear is a hymn, it might scare them a little bit. Yeah. I mean, and that that's just real talk. There are right. some words that we don't even use anymore yeah, that we're it, still singing. And, yeah. and now I, I, you talk about a, a, a hymn fan. And I love hymns. I love oh, hymns. I love goodness. hymns. Me but, and Jerry go back and forth every once in a while on yeah. which ones are our favorites. Yeah. And I've them. been in some low moments in mm-hmm. life, and a hymn will get you through it. There it will. Go. It will. I grew up on hymns, yeah. and yeah. I love them, but I, I think that the Lord can use the message through any any genre of music and i mean i'm i'm even on the the hard rock spectrum uh speaking of that because there's metal bands that i like like for today like if you yeah. listen to their lyrics um and read their lyrics like they're they're theologically sound like, i like me some zach williams rattle yeah mm. zach williams gets so like things like that though that rattle gets 10 plays a week from me nice as it should at least but that's that's a way that we can communicate with yeah. a, a younger generation who may not be able to, to use one of your brother's terms, colloquialize yeah. uh, with him or with a traditional church song. I think I think one of the biggest things I've noticed is is and it's not in the public school space because mm-hmm. I'm not immersed in the kids like you are, but um, I think as the church. You know, traditionally, people would say, "Well, why are you doing all these events and all mm-hmm. this, and and doing this big Fourth of July thing and whatnot?" I mean, I don't know that we've specifically had people ask that, but my point is, is people are looking and like, "Why are you doing that?" The times are on, or like they know yeah. when we're here. You know, we've heard people say that <laughs> oh, yeah. times are if on they, the side. If they want to come to church, they'll come. To, I don't. I think the, gone are those days yeah. where somebody might wander into a church. Like you've got to go to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what part of uh, all right? Uh, Jesus tells his followers, "Come with me, boys. I'll make you fishers of men." Mm-hmm. Now, you tell me what fisherman goes out on a pond in a boat and just kicks back and waits on the fish to, to jump in, in the boat? boat. <laughs> what about the Great Commission? Yeah, how's that? Go. How's that work? Yeah. I think the key go word in the whole the in the whole thing is go. Yeah, go, go. 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 <laughs> Go ye into them four yeah. walls. Yeah. And I'll bring go, them all to you. Go ye to church. And if somebody <laughs> wanders in <laughs> and you're sitting on the second pew, get ready. Far right. Yeah. Get ready. They're sitting beside you today. Now, I'm not, <laughs> you need to go to church. I'm not saying, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not talking bad about going to church, but I'm talking about, you know, we, we look at church wrong. Uh, it's a building to a lot in, of people. Instead of church being the climax of your spiritual experience through the week, you should actually be having those throughout the week right, when right, you're right. sharing your faith, mm-hmm. when you're winning mm-hmm. people to Christ, or when you're in there counseling with somebody that's going crazy or losing it all and it's all falling apart. All right, that's the ministry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sundays is the recovery. Yeah. Ah, that's the that's recovery. where you come in and you you as a collective group you celebrate yep. the fact you that recharge. you're yeah, and, and you and worship you fed. together, you, you get, get fed. fed. Uh, it's almost like you go to the grocery store yeah. and, and re Stock fuel up. or you yep. go get gas. And, yep. But now let's go out and get the work done. Yeah. So, but hey. you mentioned working on kids, technology, yeah. yep. music. Here's something that hasn't changed feed them. There you yeah. go. Food. We have a few events That's out there during the school language. During, the, during the year, and you always supply free food. Yeah. Yeah. That brings them from the woodworks. I have seen in personal experience people walk out with like six to go containers. Yeah, <laughs> and we did have this a couple times, and this is one of them where you just pick your battles. You'll have like we have an FCA meeting at yeah. school, and you've got food mm-hmm. that you provide, and it's free. And and you say, hey, FCA at eleven thirty in the gym today. Yep. We're having biscuits, or we're having yeah, donuts, we or mm-hmm. we're having candy, or whatever. Count me in. And we've had some kids. I know you, you're going to have a hard time believing this, fellas. <laughs> They'll come in and get the food and leave. Ah. Uh, and everything within my natural body wants yeah. to go grab them. <laughs> I say, hey, hold on. And say, wait, you got to hear yeah, it listen. before you can eat it. But uh, we just... Try to let them go. Hey, maybe one day they'll come maybe in one and day. stay for three seconds, and in that three seconds, they'll hear what they need to hear. Hey, that's the way you got to play this thing. Listen, I, I got one last thing I'd like to hit on, and we, we we briefly touched on it, but I think I think a lot of people 
think, oh, well, that's the preacher's job or that's what the evangelists do or that's what the missionaries do. They're, they spread the word. But John, one of the many things that he says uh, on Sundays is he's mentioned several times, James is not a coach. James isn't a teacher. Those are just the vehicles right. in which the platforms. he is able. He's not just a semi-professional wrestler. No. Yeah. Uh, but, right. you know, people think, oh, I I, I don't come into contact with people. Mm-hmm. Like, I, there's no way I can. I work from home. Witness or or, 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 or minister or, 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 or you know, uh, spread the gospel. I mean, how simple is it, though? What can you do, though? All right, now, we're all given the same commission, mm-hmm. commandment. Yeah. Garrett referenced that earlier. Both of you did. Uh, we're supposed to go, preach, right. make disciples. Uh, some people are terrible at it. They hate it. <laughs> yeah. They don't want to do it. Right. They're very uncomfortable. They can't. They they just. Right. They're not outgoing people. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I still don't think that means you can just ignore a few of the pages in the <laughs> right. Bible. And just tear those out of your you Bible. You got to find a way. Find a way. But what can you do? Okay. Can you cook a meal? Okay. I think so. Can, can you maybe take some food to somebody? Can you. Uh, I, we all know people can pray for folks. Yep. Can you see something that they need done? Maybe, uh, like I'm currently working through, I'm navigating through a flat tire on my lawnmower. Mm. Yard's probably a little high. So mm-hmm. if the if the yard's in bad shape, could you mow somebody's yard? And you know, when when you do things like that, yep. it catches people's eye. Right. Why in the world did they do that? Yeah. yeah. Why, what's different about him? Or you ask about their kid that's been sick. Yeah. Hey, is your kid feeling better? What makes this person so nice? And that's yeah. where I think we get this thing backwards. We feel like we have to go scream at somebody yeah. and that, say that the perfect thing. You're yeah. going to hell yeah. if you don't listen to me right now. <laughs> right, right, right. And and then they they're going to shut you out maybe yeah. forever. Yeah. But if if you can start out by building some type of connection yeah. or relationship, just being nice. Then yeah. a yeah, just be nice. Then a door will open yeah. at some point. Here's a prayer. That I've prayed, and I promise you, every time you pray this prayer, God answers it. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is an automatic. Get Wake ready. up in the morning and say, hey, God, can you put somebody in my path today that I can Ooh. share the gospel with? Mm. And if you've got that on your mind all day, you'll see somebody, you're like, oh, I bet that's the <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> and, the and, radar on. <laughs> and it may be just that you're thinking about it mm-hmm. more because you've made yeah, yeah. that your you're prayer for that day. But I've never had God not answer that Yeah. One. On the flip side of that token, you better be ready if you he does. <laughs> yeah, you better be ready. <laughs> better be ready to cook that meal. And it, and it don't always go well, and people right. get discouraged. I had uh, you know, s- some doors slammed in my face before right. we've been kind of threatened and yeah. don't, don't come back here and all that went to one place nobody was home and uh the dog chewed the pant leg oh my gosh <laughs> out of my britches <laughs> nice wow yeah so Old i mean it, it don't always go well it right. don't always go great but uh well, we've not promised that it would be pretty yeah, that's exactly right listen there's one last thing i want to say we had vbs as we've alluded to this entire situation we've alluded to that kids are changing they're different I taught the high school kids. I learned that there are kids who pour ranch dressing mm. on their spaghetti. I think you need yeah. to set the record straight that that's dang near disgusting. So you this is what? this is one way that I'm able to. This is this, I I don't necessarily do that great in like huge crowds. Mm-hmm. I like small groups. I like one on ones, and I really like to. I don't know. I like to banter with people, right? Mm-hmm. So these kids, I was giving them a hard time. I was like, you put. You put Hidden Valley Ranch on this perfectly oh, good spaghetti. First off, it's Hidden Valley, yeah. which is disgusting on itself. Well, that's what we had. Yeah. But anyways, and I, they I'm said, a fan. They, I like, I'll eat it. Yeah. I'm bougie. I like homemade ranch. Well, mm. yeah, that's always better. But the point, anyways, you put ranch on this perfectly <laughs> good getting, spaghetti. We're getting, they said, getting sidetracked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. You got to try. I was like, the spaghetti's great on its own. You don't need anything. So, what, like, what, what happened to Parmesan as a topping? I had Parmesan on mine okay. and garlic toast. Yeah. Anyways. When was that not sufficient? They said, well, you try it. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll make a deal with you boys. Shoot. I said, did either one of you know parable of the sower and the seed? They said, well, I've heard of it. I was like, okay, well, there's four souls referenced in that parable. I said, I'll, I'll make a deal with it. I will try 
this mm. nastiness of this ranch and spaghetti. If you guys promise to come back tomorrow and tell me, summarize. Whatever it takes. Explain. Explain. That's an opportunity. This parable. Eat nasty food to <laughs> I was like, look, reach souls. There we go. There, well, I mean... It's like an so episode it's, of Fear it's, Factor. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's how I like... Oh, it was nasty. It wasn't good. I'll never start... I'll, I'll never You know eat what, my, though? Now that you mention it, if you take the noodles out of the equation, because, I, I mean, I always put all my food on... You know, you got these weirdos that don't want their food yeah, touching. Yeah, separate yeah, everything. Yeah. I'll just pile it all in. Yeah. It's all oh, okay. going to the same place. True. Right. So at the end of a meal, normally... I mean, what goes with spaghetti... Salad. Yeah. Yeah. So there'll be times It'll at the touch. end of your meal, you've got some ranch and you've got some residual, some spaghetti I mean, sauce. Yeah, you can lap it all up. Still in the plate. You and can then lap it up. When, when you go through with that bread. Oh, yeah. The bread's good. Oh, you so you're, it you're up. mixing some ranch and some spaghetti sauce there. And I'll, I'll have to say. But you have the bread as a carrier. Yeah. Right. Uh, the bread is a carrier. That's, that's a, what I said. You got to take the noodles out. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, noodles and ranch. Uh, that's a little weird. I guess ultimately what I'm trying to say <laughs> is you can make deals with kids. Absolutely. Mm, Whatever it takes. Challenge them in ways to uh, go read the Bible. To reach them with bad ranch. Hey, it, that that was a small price I paid, and both of the kids came back, and hey. they, they they both, and on individual, I got them aside separately. I was like, like all right, tell me, right tell, tell me, tell me, tell me how. took one for the team. He said, this is, all right, this is this, this, and I was like, yep. So I got the other kid, same thing. Like, they both did their job. They you held up there into the, the bargain, time. and I had to eat a couple bites of ranch and spaghetti. I just played kickball and picked gnats off of myself all week. <laughs> it was <laughs> I guess very it was swampy dance like there. a mad fool. Yeah, with all them little you kids to dance. Yeah, like I had a, a good year. Had a good week. Had a good week. Manatee. James. Yep. Thank you. Oh, thank you for. Well, I hope Drew Hall's satisfied with these two idiots here. Today. If he ain't, we'll just have to run it back for V two. You know, like, we'll have to have part two. We, I, I will say that probably the most disappointing part of our time together is we've just not had enough time to discuss the world of professional wrestling. Huh? <laughs> that might have to be part two because I've I've teed you up on that one. A couple I'm just of times. kidding. Um, I'm. I have been a fan and. When I was growing up, we had four channels, but you had to go outside and turn the antenna <laughs> to get that fourth one. So really, it was just three. Uh, was that was, back when WWE was on uh, Only like on ABC? Saturdays. It was, it was on WCW? Yeah, it was WCW back then. No, it, for, no, this was WWF. World WWF. Wrestling Federation. World Wrestling WWF. Federation. It was on Saturday evenings at yeah. 6, but it was all time these terrible matches. It, yeah. They were every one as a squash match. Yep. Where you knew who was going to win, but uh, but they would talk about the pay per views coming up. Now I never saw a pay per view, mm. but they would maybe show highlights. Yep. And I don't know why I got into that. My dad hated it. He said, "I want you to look at that. They ain't even hitting each other. <laughs> it's fake. It's fake." <laughs> so I I think my favorite part is just listening to them say things to each other yeah. that I wish I could say to people, <laughs> and I, I just have to hold back. <laughs> They're living. I'm living vicariously i guess go. through through these guys go. that are yelling at each other but from a young age I, i've always now i got away from it when the undertaker hung stone cold mm. on a cross mm. and i thought ah, they've gone too far yeah, i'm out on this one boys so i quit yeah yeah and when jonathan and jeffrey zavaleta uh started getting a little bit older and, also also semi-professional wrestlers yeah they got in it yeah they for a while they were in the school of morton yep. for a while but they had started watching it, and I told them, I said, boys, I quit watching that years ago. And they said, oh, it's not bad no more. And they've, they've gone away from that attitude yeah. era is what ah, they call it, okay. yeah. into the PG era. Yeah. So now you can – I mean, it's, sometimes it's still a little bit not fit. You a little bit lewd. Young kids watching yeah. it or anything like that. But, yeah, I'm back in now. Nice. <laughs> I've never been in, so – me and, my brothers, man, me, me and my brothers, me and my brothers, we went to SummerSlam a couple of years when they really, saw, oh yeah, when they that's saw that's coming at up Hall. Saturday. That's when they had it at Freedom Hall still. Um, I don't know where they have it now, but yeah, they had SummerSlam in Johnson City. Wow. SummerSlam in Cleveland, Ohio, there this Saturday. There you go. Tune in I live guess. on Peacock. I was a big uh, <laughs> Ray Mysterio fan back in the He's day. He's still in it. Yeah, Ray's still his in son there. Dominic is wrestling now. Wow, how old, know that. how old are these folk? They're pre- Ray's pretty old now. Ray's probably I'm I'm probably older than Ray's, but no. uh, he's in his fifties. I bet. I was gonna say I think Ray's older than you. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Had Ray Mysterio, still kicking, Booker huh? T. Did you guys see any of the? Y'all ever get into politics on there? 
Not probably really. Probably shouldn't. No, not generally. If you still want people to live. <laughs> that's a good point. No, actually, if we want more engagement, actually, that's we true. need to speak. That's true. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'll just say this, not giving any kind of, you know, political message or anything mm-hmm. like that, but I did watch much of the Republican National Convention. Okay. Was it like a SummerSlam event? Oh, gosh. This was Monday <laughs> through Thursday, speaker after speaker, but the the very last speaker that introduced the Republican nominee, mm-hmm. that was Dana White. Yeah. Oh, wow. Who's in charge of UFC. Yeah, UFC. Yeah, yeah. Just prior to him was Kid Rock. I, <laughs> I do know, remember that. I don't know. If, and then the Don came in. Just prior. Now, listen to this lineup. <laughs> just prior to Kid Rock was like, I may have been somebody else squeezed in there. I can't really remember. But Franklin Graham. Yeah. Billy's boy. Yeah. Really? The guy over Samaritan's Purse. And not he only was him. he asked to say a few words, but he offered a, oh, it was a beautiful prayer. Yeah. And anybody watching that, they got gospel that night. Yeah. Earlier in the day. he say something about uh, his language or something? But wasn't yeah. It? Uh, he's tried he, to get. He's seen him a, he's seen him a text. He said, he's, he's watch your language He's trying to get him to calm down like with yeah, the yeah. language. And right. I, it, it's failed, but. Uh, <laughs> I think he may be trying. But anyway, Franklin spoke and then prayed. Earlier in the day, I would like for you boys to look this up. I'll have to go watch this. You need this and it's Detroit like an pastor? eight it's an eight minute speech from that Detroit pastor. And I think his name I've heard it. Sewell was yep. his last yep, name. S E W E L L. Yep. An inner city pastor there in Detroit. Yep. What was his first name? I don't know. I've heard this story. I'll um, have to on watch the podcast, playback. I, I remember seeing Kid Rock was on the ticket and seeing that Dana White was on the ticket, but I didn't know that. But Franklin this guy was on there. Oh, he brought the house down. Well, Trump came to his church. Yes, he did. Ah, like a couple weeks. It was ago. a month before he got shot. Yeah. Huh. And instead of you know that preacher was like, "Well, is there something you want to say uh, to us?" He's like, no, I came to hear from you. Yeah. And they said, well, what do you want from us? And he said, I'd really appreciate your prayers. Yeah. So they prayed over him. Yep. And the guy says, you know, here a month later, he got shot at. And who knows? That could have been God answering our prayers right. of protection or whatever. But uh, anyway, there was another key speaker. Not not far in front of the main show there with, with Trump. You guessed it. Hulk Hogan. Oh, I did remember Hulk being on. Okay, I saw uh, Hulk Hogan. Yeah. He he ripped the shirt. He rips the shirt. Yeah, he ripped. He's got to be at least seventy three. He's Hulk's getting up, up there. there. I mean, because he was in. He was in. Uh, what was it? Uh, he was in the big battle with Andre the Giant. Not Andre died. That was, uh, was a WrestleMania the 80s, three. Yeah, WrestleMania Goodness three. Goodness gracious, which would have been uh, I think no, eighty six. Yeah, somewhere around eighty. And then Andre 80. went at it. He body slammed that big nasty giant. He did. That was Andre passing the torch, though. I mean, we that, all know that. Right. But you know, Hogan's famous two lines. His opening statement, and just like it was in his speech. <laughs> now, let me tell you something, brother. brother. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, brother, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> and then I actually found out why he says brother so much. He would meet so many people. Yeah. Couldn't and remember their couldn't names, remember their name, so brother. he just called everybody brother. Yeah, that's which a, that that's like a that's like a southern thing too. Like I, yeah. I call a lot of people brother. Just yeah, because it's like it's easier to remember. That's fair. And then you, at the end of his speech and the end of all of his promos and wrestling, mm-hmm. and what you gonna do <laughs> when Hulkamania runs wild? On that's when he rips the shirt. Of so course it is. I got a little bit of wrestling in there. I think in James part two, we need to get into the dichotomy of Hulk Hogan and Macho Man Randy Savage. I'm going to have to Ooh. do some study in them. <laughs> yeah. Up to, in intergalactical space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to do some studying so that I can yeah, you gotta get on the wrestling boat. You got to get on the yeah. wrestling boat. Folks, speaking of boats that we can get on, Jared, there's a boat that our listeners can get on to. What is that? I don't know nothing about a boat, but they can leave us feedback. Yeah, the feedback boat. Oh, okay. Oh, the, I thought he was talking about the old ship of Zion. Ooh, the that's old a, gospel ship, three, uh, 306, 306. 310? Is that 310? The good old gospel ship's 306. Okay, and green hem- the old ship of Zion is just... Uh, that's just a good song. It's just in there. Yeah. That's just more of a hey, song. Hey, we'll have to talk about this off camera. Uh, I'm going to write that down. But, but we yeah. do need feedback. Stars and bars. You, Stars and bars. Leave us feedback. Let us like know. If you like the podcast. If you hate the podcast. didn't like the podcast. Either if way, you think someone us. else might like this podcast. If you think or James never needs to come back ever again. <laughs> Please I think, comment. I think we might have a highly requested part two. I'm just, I'm, I'm uh, maybe throwing that out there. Yeah, but I, I think we'll have a highly requested. You guys part are two. too kind. Let's we'll get your brother on here too. Yeah. There you go. There's John. some entertainment. That would be fun. 
That would be funny. Hey, he starts telling them stories about his childhood, mm. getting picked last in the dodgeball yeah, yeah. Behind selection the behind the pregnant behind. girl. <laughs> Is Golly. that true stuff? Did he really uh, yeah. get picked behind the <laughs> I mean, According to him, I, I mean, I wasn't in his class, but he oh, says. Man. Oh, man. Poor John. Yeah. I got some John. John stories. Not enough to get well, into maybe, today. Well, maybe come, maybe come uh, kingdom come, the, the last will be first. There you <laughs> there go. You hey, go. <laughs> He's banking on it. He's banking on <laughs> it. On that note, Jared, here's the hard part. And we will see you guys next time. He didn't make that very hard. Y'all have a good one.